yeah, so the, the partnership, um, it's a partnership between Natural England and Rethink Nature, uh, which is um, seven of the country's leading conservation organisations. Um, it's a bit of a groundbreaking program. Wildlife conservation organisations haven't really worked in this way before on the ground. Um, so a bit of an innovative project. Um, next slide, please, Naomi. Um, so our funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund, like the Seven Great Horseshoe Bat Project, um, but also has a range of other smaller funders. Um, so yeah, thank you very much if you buy a lottery ticket. Um, yeah, next slide, thank you. Sorry, ne next, yeah, thank you, next, thanks very much. Um, so to give you an idea of um, the extent of the programme where we're working, uh, there's various projects working uh, length and breadth of the country from the tip of Cornwall right up to Northumberland National Park. Um, there are seven integrated projects that are very much focused on uh, threatened, spe uh, threatened habitats and landscapes. And then there, and these, these ones will support a, sort of a wide range of species. Um, and then there are 12 um, species focused projects that are very much focused on individual species. Um, so that's two mammals, uh, two birds, two plants and six invertebrates. Um, and obviously mine is one of the um, species focused projects. The next slide please. So on to the bat, uh, yeah, the grey long-eared bat, it's a, a medium sized bat. Um, so uh, yeah, sort of 25 to 30 centimetres uh, wingspan. Um, the ears are almost as long as its body. Um, it's got very, very long ears, so around sort of four to five centimetres in adults. Um, and it's very similar to the brown long-eared bat, um, but a lot rarer. Um, and obviously it's a lot greyer. Um, although um, juvenile brown long-eareds do look quite grey. Um, so one of the um, sort of primary ways of, of telling this, um, this, these species apart, they have sort of different uh, tragus and thumb measurements, um, but quite often DNA is the only sort of definitive way to establish which one it, it is. Um, so they weigh about 12 grams, but obviously that varies quite a lot depending on how much they eat and time of year etc um, and like a lot of other bat species favorite foods are notchwood moths so those yellow underwings um, that keep coming up um, and uh, also crane flies which are the adult form of leather jackets um, which are a, a bit of an agricultural pest so next slide please so um, the grey longed bat is one of England's rarest mammals. Uh, the English population is estimated at around a thousand individuals, um, sort of somewhere between 400 and 3,000, um, according to the uh, latest uh, mammal review, review in 2018. Uh, this species is very much restricted to the south coast or, or the s southern part of the country, um, generally quite close to the coast, with very few known maternity colonies. Um, and its key threats are a loss of su suitable habitat, so primarily species-rich grassland, which are sort of favoured foraging areas, um, but also wet grassland and uh, hedgerows. Um, but we, we are also aware of a, a number of um, roosts that have been lost over the past few years as well. The next slide, please. So this is the, the main uh, project area where I'm working. So um, the roost down in the South Hams um, all the way over to East Devon. Um, so when I started the project it was uh, primarily eight uh, maternity roosts um, and we discovered another one since the start of the project and uh, the uh, purple circles are the sustenance zone that's been mentioned quite a few times so this is a five kilometre sustenance zone um, that I'm working with landowners around the, the, the core roosts um, the green dots are um, pretty much all of the, the grey long-eared individual records uh, for Devon. There's a few um, sort of outliers, um, some in North Devon, um, but these are sort of the vast majority of the records. Um, and then I'm also working on the least cost path. So this is the sort of main route of habitat connectivity between uh, the roosts in Devon. So my main focus um, in these areas is, is landowner engagement. <clears throat> yeah, as I say, my, my primary role is landowner engagement, so trying to encourage uh, all important bat friendly land management. Uh, so, trying to raise awareness of the species, 
um, and, but also um, highlighting that um, sort of bat friendly land management has a range of other benefits, including soil, water and nutrient conservation, um, pollinator services, pest suppression, uh, as well as carbon sequestration and other ecosystem services. A key part of this landowner engagement is, is trying to um, work towards habitat creation and restoration, primarily species rich grassland. Um, as I said, that's the main foraging area for grey long eards. Um, also, population monitoring, so trying to get as many of the roosts, the, the core roosts that we know about, into the National Bat Monitoring Programme. Um, also, community engagement, so raising awareness of this species to local communities, showing how important this species is and how, how lucky people are to have this species living on their doorstep. Um, and then also volunteer engagement, so that's, that can be um, engaging people to help with leading bat walks or assisting in emergent surveys of the core roosts, um, bat detector training and uh, other citizen science stuff. So in terms of landowner engagement, it follows a very similar um, model to the Great Horseshoe Bat Project. So um, working uh, in delivering workshops, um, providing site visits um, to give advice on best management for bats. Um, also presentations um, and farm walks. So in terms of um, habitat cre creation, um, I think that figures a, a little bit out of date, but um, it's uh, around 50 hectares of grasslands that we've created um, or restored to date. So trying to convert um, the picture in the top of the middle um, to something more top right, um, you know, uh, more species and structural diversity that's really important for the, the moths and other invertebrates that um, the grey long eared loves to eat. Um, so the map below shows um, obviously the uh, maternity roosts um, and the grey long eared records um, in the country and then also the yellow and uh, red dots are where we're doing grassland restoration. So in terms of population monitoring and, and volunteer and community engagement, um, a lot of it's partnership working. Um, so working with other organisations um, in terms of data collection, working with consultants, um, DBRC and Devon Back Group. Um, it was never really been a, a target of the project to find new roosts, um, but just try to work with you know, the information that we've got in terms of enhancing habitats. Um, but inevitably this has happened, finding uh, new roosts and new records. Um, so we've had really great cooperation from lots of different organisations um, sort of donating their records and helping us to build a better picture of what's going on in the landscape. Um, so as I said, uh, the roost um, and habitat monitoring with volunteers. So um, as well as monitoring the, the key roosts, we've been monitoring some of the, the habitat restoration sites um, using audio moths and volunteers. Um, we also have a, a couple of grey long-eared bat champions. Uh, these are volunteers that have been doing really um, sort of over and above um, stuff in terms of delivering bat walks um, to, to huge numbers of people down in South Devon. Um, and we've delivered over 50 community events to date, and that includes bat walks, farm walks, landowner workshops, talks, bat detector training, and then various articles in various publications. So future plans, um, currently we've got funding until early 2021, so not, not a huge amount of time left, but we'll be continuing to engage with landowners. So if anyone has any landowner contacts um, within the sort of um, the, the Tin Valley, X Valley area, that's sort of where I'm, I'm aiming to focus um, for the next few months, um, then please do get in touch. Um, we're going to be doing more grassland restoration and monitoring this autumn. Um, increased roost monitoring, hopefully. Uh, with volunteers. Um, we've uh, published, published a, a grey long-eared bat pack for schools, so how schools can get involved um, and do some meadow, mini meadow creation on their sites. Um, and I've also um, developed a long-eared bat ID guide, which is out now, so that came out um, last week. So if you go on the BCT website or the Back From The Brink website, they should, they should be on there. Um, so if you want to have a look at um, some more information about how to ID brown and grey long-eards, then that's, that's the place to go. 
and oh yeah just a, a couple of bits of other sources of information so this is outside my uh, grey long eared bat work um, at BCT um, we work in partnership with a couple of organisations the Nature Friendly Farming Network and also Farm Wildlife which um, both have quite a lot of useful information so worth having a look at those websites and that's me done just a little bit about the project and the partnership so happy to take any questions um, at the convenient time <laughs>